how it's going to be. Okay, so we talked about the Taylor series uh, and the um, partial derivatives, right? So yesterday we ended up when we were talking about the partial derivatives and we worked on an example. This was the last uh, example that we had, like um, we found the partial derivative of the f x1, x2 equal to the, like we had two variables, x1, ln x1, ln x2. Okay, so let's review it in five minutes because we already missed some part of the class. So um, what's the, what are we doing right now? What's our objective? This chapter? Yes, please. So we want to solve the system of nonlinear. When we say system, what does it mean? We have, we have distillation column, pressure, temperature, uh, purity. All of these ones are variables. So we have multiple variables, and their relation together is nonlinear, right? So we want to solve those systems. And then we talked about the how can we write them down like those systems? What's the main method that we are going to use? We did a Kahoot yesterday. No, the day, yeah, it was yesterday. And at the main thing that we talked about as a result of our Kahoot, do you remember the method? Yes, please? Awesome, Newton Raphson, right? So we are going to use the method of like the same similar things to Newton Raphson. And in Newton Raphson, we are working with the derivative, right? So now think about it. When we write down the equation for the Newton Raphson, we have derivative, and we need to work with these, um, find out these derivatives, right? If you have one uh, variable, that would be a piece of cake. When we have two or more than two variables, we would need to do the partial derivatives. So that's the reason that we are working with these partial derivatives. Because when we have more than one variable, so we need to get the derivatives like partial. So we worked on this example. So look at here. When we want to work on the partial derivatives, at the same time about the um, Taylor series, we want to know that what's going to happen if we have mo more than one variable for Taylor series as well. So when we look at here, for the for function of one variable, we know that for the Taylor series, you're gonna, we are going to find out the initial value plus the um, h, like x minus x naught, and then the, the first derivative, and so on. That's the up to first order. If we have two, look at here, when we have two variables, what's going to happen? We have um, x and y. You can see that we have initial value of the um, initial value of x null like and y null, right? And we find out the uh, function for it. And then look at the next part is like x minus x null, and then we have the partial derivative respect to x, right? And we get the um, partial derivative respect to y as well, and multiplied by y minus y and all as well. So it's like that you can, over there you can see that we are, we are having both, we are considering both um, x here and y here, right? So let's see. So, so far, we know about the Newton Raphson, we know about the partial derivative, right? And we know about the Tyler series when we have more than one variable. These three things, we are working on these ones. Okay. And now we want to combine them. So for the, here it says that consider the system of nonlinear equation where we have like F1, F2, Fn, and we have n variables for them, uh, like X1, X2, Xn. X1, X2, Xn is like X, Y, Z, those variables that we were talking before, right? And then with the... Taylor series expanded up to the first order. So the equation that we would have is going to be something like this. So in your example, I want to ask you to prove these ones. But it's good that we know that what's going on, how we get these equations, right? Uh, so I'm going to ask you for the application of these ones. Look at here. So we have f1, f2, fn, right? 
And then when you um, want to expand it for the up to first order of the Taylor series, you can see that we have S1, it means that, okay, first, your first function, right? And then you have it for, you were talking about the Xi and Xi plus 1 for the Taylor series, right? So it's like that, this one is very similar to that one. And then you have it for F2 as well. We're going to write it down until we reach the Fn. Do you have any questions for this part so far? So it's the expansion of the Taylor series, right? When you look at it, it's like that we have the... We just, it's, we just have more than one variable because of that we have the partial derivative, right? Here is the like partial derivative of the f2 at i, right? So and then respect to like variable x1. And then we have the partial derivative of the second function in our system, right? Respect to uh, next variable that we have, right? Variable number two. And then we go on to n, up to we reach the n. So using the newton raphson method, um, when we, in the newton raphson if you remember yesterday, we said that when we want to calculate something like this, if we want to find out the slope at here, right? So we said that if this is xi, right? If this is xi, this one, look at here, is going to be my xi plus 1, this point. Then we want to find out, and we are working with the slope at this point, at xi. So when we want to work, um, find out this one, we are going to, we said that the slope is like rise per run, right? So the rise here is going to be f of xi minus 0. So the f of xi plus 1 is equal to 0. You see? So the same thing is here. Look at here. So we said that f for the first function, second function, and function for all of them, at i plus 1, we consider it equal to 0. If this one, the logic comes from the newton raphson methodology that we had. Right? And so then, we try to play with these equations, right? And then extract the matrix that we have. So we find out something like, like a matrix, and we call it Jacobian matrix, but it's like it's all the partial energy. Look at here, so we have for our Jacobian, what's happening is that first of all, all of the things that you're going to write down here is based on the partial derivatives, right? So we have n function, you can memorize it like this if you want. So you can say that, okay, so here is going to, this row is going to re represent, I'm going to write it down this way. So it's going to represent my, the partial derivative that I have for f1 based on the different x, right? x1, x2, x3, I'm going to write down like x1, xi for now. And then we have it, the second row represent for the second function, right? And the last row is going to represent for the end function. So when you look at it, look at there is like partial derivative of the first function, right? Respect to x1, and then partial derivative of these. So here, if we say that we have these points, like these elements, so it's just elements. So this one is going to be partial derivative of f1 respect to the x1. This one is going to be partial derivative of f1 again respect to x2. So it's like this here. It's then going to be the partial derivative of f1, f1, f2, f3, let's say fi, respect to the x1. So you can say like this. This one is for first function, second function. The rows, at each row, functions are constant, right? 
And in each column, when you look at it, variables are constant. So with this method, we would say, okay, so if I ask you what's going to be this one, what would you say? And don't look at the screen, please. Just think about it. So the question is for this. Yes, Kenny? Deriving x uh, function, the nth function with respect to x1. Awesome. So this one, thank you. So it's going to be function n, right? Respect to x1. x1. It's the first column, right? So if you memorize it like this, it's going to be a lot easier. And then, so when we want to write it down in matrix form, so we have the Jacobian. We can see that here is like the from, the, from this equation system that we had here, like we had all of the F1, F2, Fn. So for this side, like left side of our equations, we equal that to the zero, right? And then for the, so we try to write down in the matrix form. So it's going to be like Jacobian matrix times the matrix of the like Xi plus one equal to minus like F, all of the F functions that we have, plus the Jacobian matrix times Xi um, times the matrix of the Xi. So what we want to do right now is that, like for a few minutes, do I have to find out the Jacobian? It's, gonna, it's on page one, let's see. It should be on like 100, 101, on page 100 of your notes. These things that we are learning right now. It's on page 99 or 100. So what we want to do right now is that I want you to work on it. Um, for a few minutes, try to get that equation or expand that equation, like the equation that we have here for the. Before going to the next step, so try to expand this equation and see how does it look like. Like, right? Because we derive this equation from um, these ones, like the uh, expansion of the Taylor series, right? So try to just write down, like, for example, for a system of, like, let's say, 3 by 3. Like, we have three functions, and we have x1, x2, x3. Try to work on this. Try to write down to see what's going to happen with this. Please. And then we are going to continue um, with, and we'll talk about this and how can we find out this x i plus 1. But I think before going to that, it's good that you would know that when you look at this, what does it mean it's, when it's like this. So we want to work on something that we have. So our question is that we have x1, x2, x3, right? And then we have f1, f2, f3 as well. So we have three variables and three functions. So the degree of freedom is zero, so we can solve our problem. Try to write down the Jacobian matrix of it, the xi plus one of it, and then f of it, because this is Jacobian and this is xi. If you can write down this function, like this uh, matrix, this one is going to be very similar. So I want you to write down here for me first, What's going to be the Jacobian of it? And then how would you write down this matrix? And also, how would you write down your F matrix?
And if you have question, raise your hand. I'm going to come to you. So focus on Jacobian for now. Write down the Jacobian matrix first. Um, like in after three minutes, we are going to work on the Jacobian, and then we go to the next one and the next one. Okay, so let's write down the Jacobian of it. For example, here. All right, what will be the first element? Yes, please. Uh, DF1, or DF1. DF1, yeah. So it's going to be the partial derivative respect to the of the function one respect to x1. Yes. What would be the second element here? Someone else? Please? So we are looking for the element here. Yeah. Yes, please? Yeah, over awesome. So it's like we are going to the second row. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be DF2, like partial derivative of the second function, it's still x1, right? And then I'm going to write down the last one, f3 for x3, right? So now, let's move to the second column. What would be the second column? What would be the first element of the second column? So, last column. This one, right? Okay, yeah. So this one? The X1, yeah. That's correct, thank you. Okay, any other? Uh, the second column? That's good, you're really listening. Yeah. Yes, please. 
Awesome. So when we are going to the second column, the first one, so is this one is going to be DF1 over DX2. So our variable is changing. So it's like this. If this one, you are getting the partial derivative, let's say, respect to temperature, this one is going to be the same example of the distillation column. This one is going to be the partial derivatives for different functions respect to pressure. So the columns, right? The variables are the same. So the, and then we are going to have the uh, DF2 respect like over DX2. Thank you. And then 3 respect to 3. And this one? Awesome. Okay, and ne next one? Say that fast. So DF1 over X3, right? Awesome. So this one over X3 and this one, finally, something over X3 and the denominator. X3, X3. I I was so excited. <laughs> okay. So let's see. So we know how to work with the Jacobian. You how to get it. So the next one is this one. How would you write it? You can see the difference between this and this, right? So this one is going to be a vector matrix. But let's see. Oh, I have a question. With the Jacobian. Okay, I'm going to ask this question later. It's about the iterations, but I'm going to ask you later. So what about this one? Xi plus 1. What does I here means? What does it represent? No, I just told you. And then I said that I'm going to talk about it later. Yep. Iteration, right? It represents the number of the iterations that we have. So this one comes from the iteration number, for example, xi. And that one comes from the, the variable is going to be the same. So what should I write down here in that case? And that's the part that I see that most of the time we do mistake on it. Think about it for a minute. It's a column. Yes, it is a column. Yes, please. Uh, X1, X2, X3. Awesome. So X1. X2. X3. What about I plus 1? We said that I represent for the, we use the I and I plus one for the iteration, iteration. X1 is like comma I plus one. Awesome, thank you. So X1, I plus one, X2 at I plus one, X3 at I plus one, right? So it's like the, but when you look at it like this, it seems simple, but when I ask you to develop the, so here, when you want to write it down, I see that the students are like this. I mean, that's what happens for me as well. I'm like this. Okay, I have x1 plus 1, I have x1 here, I have x1, x2, x3. So what's going on? So just remember this. This i plus 1 is the iteration. So the next thing that we are looking for is f. What do we do the f here? Yes. Yes, F1, F2, F3. And we are going to have the, um, after that, when we look at this equation, we have Jacobian again, that we found it, and we have Xi. For Xi, is going to be similar to this. X1, X2, X3, we just have, we are going to find it at I. Right? Why do we have different functions? Are we like trying to find the, the root of one function? No, root of like three different functions. 
it's like the we are working on the systems. So when we were talking, that one, the Newton Raphson that you see over there, and we like the Kahoot that we worked yesterday. When we are talking about the open bracket opening method, open methods, a bracketing method. So Newton Raphson was one of the open methods, right? At that, like in chapter, I don't know, forever, like thousand years ago, chapter eight, nine, something like that. So we were working on one function. But now we are expanding that. And that's the main reason that we would have like more than one variable. So we are going to work on a, on a numerical example as well. It's we have multivariable different functions, right? Because think about it. If you have one function with three variables, the degree of freedom is not going to be zero. So you can't solve it, right? We're going to work on degree of freedom soon. Don't worry about it. We're going to work on practice. OK. So let's see what do we have. Do you have any question about these ones? OK, so we have this. Then when we find out from that equation here, think about it. If we multiply both sides by the Jacobian minus 1, the determinant of the Jacobian, right? So we are going to get xi plus 1. But here we need to multiply the Jacobian, uh, multiply with the determinant of the Jacobian. So what's going to we get? We are going to get something like this. Of course, we need to play with that one a little. So we are going to find out that xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus Jacobian. So that one, it's going to be xi plus 1 equal to the xi minus the Jacobian that we have, or we found, right, times f. So because now you know that how to write down these ones, finding this one shouldn't be hard. And now, for a moment, think about the newton raphson equation. The original one. Just try to write it down for yourself and then compare it with this. Like just for one minute. Yes, please. Yes, of course. The equation you know on the board of the Jacobian times iteration equaling negative f and that's Jacobian times x i. Yeah. Is that, where is that coming from? Oh, this, you mean, okay, so, you mean this one? Where does this come from? Also, there is an addition of the slides. Yeah, you're missing a slide. Oh, you mean this one here? Yeah, yeah, that was my bad, sorry, that was a typo. Um, so you're saying that, this equation, what the, where does it come from, right? Yeah. Is that the question? OK. So when we are writing down the, so there is a question. So before going to compare it with the newton raphson we are going to go back to that. So this equation that we have here, how can we find it? So when we are looking at this type of the, the expansion of the, all of these f1, f2, fn, right, up to the first order of the Taylor series, so when we use the, that. So it's going to be like, you can get x1 plus, like x1, i plus 1 minus x1 i times the partial derivative of the f1 over x1, uh, 
uh, respecting to x1 and then x2 respecting to x2 until you have the f1 respecting to fn, right? So we are going to write him down for f1, f2, fn. After that, so these ones are going to be 0, exactly the same because of the same reason that we had here. So when you're talking about the xi and xi plus 1, so your f of xi plus 1 is going to be 0. So because of that, you're going to put all of these ones equal to 0. So what you're going to have, you're going to have these equations right on the right-hand side. And then you are just trying to, so look at these ones. You have on the first one, for example, you have partial derivative of the f1 respecting to x1. And then partial derivative of f2, f1 respecting to x2. And when you look at it here, is partial derivative of f1 respecting to x1. So, for example, partial derivative of f1 respecting to x2. So it's exactly the same thing. So we are going to extract the Jacobian from here. So in fact, this equation, if you expand it, it's going to be similar to this equation. So it comes from this equation. Like the original one, original system that we had. We had the same methodology for the linear system as well. And we were working with the gas side of those ones, right? But just this because it has more than one variable, it's a little, when you look at it, it has like, it's like a salad. It has lots of them. So we try to fact, factor the uh, matrix as well. Right? So if you want, I can expand this one. So one way is that if you do this one reverse, so after this step, if you try to multiply them and add them, you're going to get exactly that one. right? But if you want, after the lecture, we can, I can work with you on that. I won't ask you to prove these on the exam, right? Because of that, then I don't want to put like 15 minutes lecture on it. But definitely, if you want, we can, me and you, we can work on it. But it comes from that equation. Okay. okay. So let's go back to the wrapping up our um, Jacobian and the, all the things that we had. So for this one, do you remember the original newton raphson equation that we have in chapter 9? Yep. Uh, F1 equals to x minus over f So let's replace it by the xi plus 1 and xi because we want to say if it's similar, how similar it is. Yes, that's correct. xi plus 1 and then xi, which was x null over there. Right? And then what? Oh, it's... Um, Minus F at X. I, I yes. Over F okay, and here is the moment that we would say, ta-da, look at here. So do you see any similarity? This one. I can write it down F prime X I my power minus one and put it here, right? So it's exactly the same. Instead of having the derivative here, we have the Jacobian, which represents the partial derivative. Jacobian is the partial derivative for all of the variables that we have. So when you look at it, it's almost the same as the newton raphson equation that we had before. The only thing is that here we have multiple variables. Here, multiple variables, comparing to this one that we had before. So. And so when we have this, like, if you remember the newton raphson equation, which you can, for this one, if you don't remember it, you can quickly find it from here, from this one. So from this one, what would you say? You would say the slope, right, which is like the f prime at xi. It's equal to the rise run. And then you, so that's the Newton Raphson equation, right? So we got the Newton Raphson equation from here. Or you can get it from the expansion of the Taylor series as well. So yesterday we, we learned about that. So there are two methods that we do. So let's say here. So we have found similar equations, right, to this. And 
we talked about the convergence criteria. So the next step is that, okay, we have the iteration. So give me like five, six minutes, then we are gonna finish today's lecture. Um, so let's say we have iteration. So when we are gonna stop with the, whenever we have iteration, when are we gonna stop? Louder, please. Exactly. It depends that what's going to be our convergence criteria, <laughs> right? The error that we are considered. So with the convergence criteria, with the epsilon or error, we would say that always we have the best, better estimate minus the worst one divided by the better one, right? And then we wish that it's the same things that we had before. Um, like for other ones, other methods, for linear ones, for all of those um, open and bracketing methods, for all of them, we use the same um, convergence criteria equation. So we said that, so we want to find out the epsilon, we would say the better estimate minus the worst estimate divided by the better estimate. If you have the exact value of your function for some reason, so you're, if you have your better estimate as exact value, you're going to put it over there. But here, when we have iteration, is like that. You would say your next guess, xi plus 1, minus xi divided by the xi plus 1. Right? So we would say epsilon is the given tolerance for us. Awesome. So let's work on this one quickly. And then we are going to finish today's le uh, lecture. So we are interested to find out it's the question that you see is simpler than this. Because this one was 3 by 3, but the question, uh, question that we have is 2 by 2. Work on that for 5 minutes, please. And then I'm gonna, we are going to work on that on board together. Should there be a plus sign? Huh? Should there be a plus sign in the second law? No, it's not. It's nonlinear. If we have, that's a very good question. So this one makes it nonlinear, right? X1, X2? I can check the notes as well. No, there is no plus sign. Even in your notes, it's on page 101. So we have a system of two variables with two equations, and they're nonlinear. So in the question, we want to set up a function of f and the Jacobian matrix for this system. So write down what is f1 equal to, f2 equal to, and then find out the Jacobian for me, please.
And if you have questions, please raise your hand. I'm going to come and answer your questions. Okay, let's find out F1, F, F2 here, and then I'm going to give you time for the Jacobian. Okay, so what do the F1? Yes, please. Yes, minus 55, right? So because we said that we want to have like something equal to zero. Remember the first equation that we had, like in the, like, like two, three slides before this. So x f1, it's going to be this, okay? And f2, yes, please. Uh, x1, x2 minus 12. Perfect. So x1, x2 minus 12. So now I'm going to give you like two minutes, right? Um, Find out the Jacobian of it, and that's good. We have three minutes, so if I give you two minutes, then I have one minute to write down the Jacobian. talking about this one? Okay, so it's the first row, it's going to be first function, right? And we are in the second column, so it's going to be respecting, you, know, you are going to get the derivative of the first function respecting to the second um, variable. So what's your question? Ah, oh, okay. So that's what you would say, yeah, so this is the representing first column, so first First function, second function, first uh, first variable, second variable. Okay. So now let's write it down. This one. What would be the first element? One of the ladies. Yes, please. Three x one squared. Awesome. So three x one square. Here. Yeah? Yes. Three x two x two squared. X two squared. X2, yeah, thank you, awesome. This one? Yes, please? X2. X2, yeah, this one is like that you would say that for the partial derivative and this one? X1, awesome. So, look at here. We found the Jacobian. We have the F1, F2, right? Meaning that we can have the matrix for it. And then in the, this equation, we need X matrix of Xi which is going to be for this one, it's going to be x1, x2 at i, right? xi plus 1, it's going to be, you can, it's going to be matrix. Let's write it down in matrix form. So it's going to be again x1, x2, but at i plus 1. Jacobian and f. So this one is 2 by 2. Finding out the determinant of it is going to be very easy, right? This times this one minus this one times this one. So it's going to give you the determinant of it. 
Um, then we can find out the, like, do the iterations and find out based on the, here we haven't been asked to find out x1 and x2, but based on the tolerance interval and, and the convergence criteria that we have been given, right? So we can find out that how many iter iterations do we need. So next week, we are going to work on the evaluation of the Jacobian through finite difference. Whenever we say finite difference, what do we mean? Yes. That's not a question. No, no, wait. Me finish this one, and then we are going to go back to your question. Because this is the main point for this lecture. So when we say we want to have the evaluate this Jacobian, we define a difference next week. Just try to connect it. When we evaluate the Newton Raphson with the finite difference, what happened? We had secant method, right? So it's like that instead of a slope, instead of derivative, finding out the slope based on derivative, we, use, we find the slope based on the finite difference. So we want to do the same things with the Jacobian. So we are going to do that. For now, our class is done, I believe. Yeah, it's 10 22. Thanks for waiting. After the class, I'm going to answer your question, okay? Now we're done.